Okay, so uh, I'm going to uh, press the new ball joints into the uh, knuckles here. Uh, here's the lower. Lower has to be done first because it has to be pressed in from the top and not you have to press it in through the hole of the uh, upper ball joint. So this is one good reason to do that one first. Uh, and you can tell uh, once again that this is the lower because there's no cotter pin hole. Here's the uh, upper with the uh, cotter pin hole. And uh, I'm going to press them in using the uh, giant ball joint C uh, clamp press thing here. So, fun, fun. Okay, looks like I was wrong about one thing about... Uh, they do still say to uh, install a lower ball joint first, but uh, I don't see the justification why. Certainly the tool is not going to interfere. I can press it in this way, and uh, I'll get in most of the way before it hits this... Uh, uh, piece, but at that point, I can use one of the other spacers up here, and uh, and uh, install it then. But unfortunately, my C clamp isn't quite long enough to include the spacer and this uh, this adapter in there, so I'll have to I have to do it in two stages here. So, anyways, there you go. Okay, so the lower ball joint is in, and uh, because of the size of my C clamp. Uh, I had to use an unusual combination of the uh, tools with the press to get it on. First I had to use this on the top and this sleeve inside of this sleeve here. That would fit over top of the ball joint. Now this one actually was overlapping the outside but the inner tube was actually pressing on the upper edge of the ball joint. From there I had to use this tube on the bottom and uh, this on, on you know, on it to press on the cup or on the uh, receiver tubing and uh, that you know like if the clamp had been probably an inch longer it would have been adequate this one is just over like about six and a quarter inches or so thereabouts um, so if you're looking for one I would recommend trying to find one just a little bit larger than that this was barely adequate to do it I was able to do it without having to have to do anything weird but you know, it did take about three different setups before I finally got the uh, ball joint in. And obviously, well, I think we all want to try and do it reasonably quickly or in one step. Now, granted, if you had a real hydraulic press, it probably wouldn't have been an issue. You would have just put the uh, this cup on the bottom on your plate, you know, and uh, pressed it in from the top, hitting, you know, like an adapter, something like this. Anyways, there you go. Okay, the upper and lower ball joints are uh, in. Um, if I had to say one thing, I completely disagree with them saying that you should put the lowers in first. I think I would have had a lot easier time with the driver's side upper if I wouldn't have had the lower in. Uh, that was the only one I had a problem with. I had to actually uh, make a uh, another sleeve for the bottom to uh, be able to press it in because... Uh, it uh, I didn't have uh, clearance at the top or on the steering arm, so I had to use one specific one. And because it was really long, I couldn't use a short or I had to use a short one on the bottom, which I didn't have. So I had to make a new one. Blah blah. End result is now it's in marred up the bottom of the uh, the uh, paint on the uh, knuckle, but I don't think I'm too worried about that. You know, like it's it's a work truck really. I'm just doing this for preservation. Anyways, on to the next thing. Okay, so the knuckles are on and torqued. And I'm uh, happy to say I will. next thing I will be doing is, uh, I guess I'll be pressing the bearings and seals into the spindles. Now, I said the other day that the uh, seals did not look to be the same as the original ones that were in it. Well, I looked it up on the web and the, uh, you know, specifications for the new seals is exactly the same as the uh, one uh, remaining one that was still on the uh, spindle so I'm going to use them and we'll see what happens uh, not exactly super confident but that's apparently what they're supposed to be anyways I'm happy with this part so far um, with any luck uh, I'll have the axles in spindles on Ship might even have it back on its uh, tires over there. Uh, I won't be able to put it underneath because I haven't got my new springs yet. 
but uh, those should come this week. Hit them with a little bit of paint, and uh, this thing should be back on its wheels. And I think that the next thing I'll work on is I'll clean up this uh, this uh, standard or automatic transmission cross member here, and uh, wait and see what happens. I'm still waiting to hear back from the guy who had the Dodge uh, divorce transfer case, but uh, hopefully I'll hear back from today. Okay, the uh, new uh, axle bearings and seals are in place. The uh, bearings have been repacked and uh, are ready to go. I'm, I haven't greased inside the uh, bore there, but I will do that when I put the uh, put it on the axle. I just don't want to do it now, so I don't make a big mess. And uh, next step is to press the new U joints into the uh, axle shafts. Okay, so the uh, driver's side axle is uh, in and ready to go. The U-joint is all pressed in. looks good. Um, I had something funny happen with the passenger side one. It would seem that for some odd reason, General Motors decided to go with two different sizes of U-joints uh, for the uh, fronts of these trucks. There's the one for the passenger side, and here's the one the driver's side. Very subtle difference. Uh, you wouldn't notice it, you know, too readily. But there you go. Different sizes. So just a pain in the ass. So we got two, when I went to Napa, I got two of the this size. So I guess I'm going back tomorrow to uh, take one of those back and uh, get that size. So I guess this axle won't be together today. I was hoping it would be. I'll put the uh, driver's side uh, or yeah the driver's side uh, axle shaft in but I guess it won't be back on its wheels again not unless I want to just put the uh, unloaded spindle in which I don't it doesn't seem to make any sense anyways there you go okay end of day update uh, haven't gotten really any further with the uh, with the axles uh, obviously I can't do anything with the passenger side because the u-joint I put the uh, driver's side uh, axle in and everything looks fine uh, U joints a little bit tight, but uh, not so tight that I think it's unreasonable. Um, I haven't put the spindles on because there is a slight difference between the two, and you know, for lack of you know good marking, it wore off. Uh, I can't remember which spindle is which, and. Uh, Consequently, what I'm going to do is, where the difference is, is the depth that they uh, go into here. Now, I'm going to say that the lower, shorter depth one is probably the driver's side one, which is this one. But I can't say for sure until I have both axles in. I can measure the distance to this uh, ceiling surface. And uh, when I know that, I can, uh, I can uh, you know, better compensate for my mistake. So anyways, so that's going to wait until tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll have my uh, new U-joint and I'll be able to put the other uh, axle back together. And then maybe that can put the uh, spindles on and then I can do the rotors and on and on and on. I still have to press the, uh, the new uh, brake rotors onto the uh, hubs, I should call them. But uh, apart from that, uh, this axle is very close to being back together.